Hello everyone and welcome to RTFI Pro. George Jakes here and today we'll be discussing the third video on the trilogy on x-ray tubes. Today's video will be discussing scatter radiation and the techniques on how to control it. When a beam of radiation comes in contact with an object such as a weld, the radiation is either transmitted, absorbed, or becomes scattered. The ratio of these photon interactions depend on the material's thickness, density, and radiation energy level. To understand how to control scatter, First, we need to understand what causes scatter. Scattering is most frequently caused with increased KVP and with materials of low atomic number. Causes of scatter. 1. Increase in material thickness. Increasing the thickness of the component or weld under examination increases scatter radiation. As thickness increases, it has much higher potential of photon scattering occurring within the thicker object than the thin materials. 2. Increase in field size. Increasing the field size increases the risk of scatter. With increased field size, more x-rays in the primary beam will be spread out which will significantly increase the radiation scatter. 3. Increase the KVP. Increasing the KVP increases the amount of scatter. As the energy level is increased, scatter radiation will be increased. All objects that are subjected to a direct radiation beam are subjected to scatter radiation to some degree. Scatter radiation will affect the quality of the radiograph as it will decrease the contrast and definition as scatter forms a fog which results in a non-uniform density. It is therefore required to minimize this effect by controlling scattered radiation using various techniques. Sources of scattered radiation Scattered radiation can occur from walls, floors, nearby objects, or even the component under examination. The most difficult form to control is the object under examination, as in some cases, depending on the shape of the object, the radiation scatters abruptly within the object, so it is therefore required to control factors such as the energy level and scatter radiation from other sources such as floors or walls by using distance and lead shielding. Scatter radiation can be controlled by blocking, filtering, masks, screens, radiation levels, and grids. Blocking. Blocking is the use of lead or other attenuated materials to reduce the radiation from scattering back onto the film. Blocking can be formed in various techniques to reduce the amount of total scatter. Blocking using lead behind the film cassette. When the primary radiation beam is directed onto an object such as the floor or wall, this radiation increases the risk of radiation returning to the film and in some cases providing an image on the radiograph from what was on the back side of the film or even from the side of the film, such as a cement block, lead letter B, sheet of steel, etc. A lead foil screen is placed at the back of the cassette to help reduce the amount of backscatter. In addition, a thicker piece of lead placed on the floor behind the cassette covering the object under examination will further reduce the amount of scatter. 
This technique is used more frequently while performing radiography in exposure bays when examination is done near the floor and where longer exposure times exist near scattering surfaces. Blocking with the use of masks. Masks are pieces of lead that are cut to fit tightly around the edges or sides of the specimen under examination. They are primarily used where the object does not completely cover the film such as a round object like a bar or a casting and when the object has a high absorption for x-rays. As the object is masked with lead tightly adhering to the object it reduces the effects of scattered radiation from the side and backscatter as well. As shown in the image the round bar is masked from both sides and the floor and only the primary radiation beam is being absorbed through the object as both side and backscatter radiation will not penetrate the mask. Filtering. Filtering is typically the use of copper or lead that is placed near the x-ray tube head between the tube and the object or between the object under examination and the film. When the filter is placed near the tube, its purpose is to filter out the longer wavelengths of the primary radiation beam to create a harder primary beam. As you see in the image, only the shorter high energy wavelength photons are penetrating and the lesser energy longer wavelengths do not penetrate the filter. The longer wavelength photons are undesirable as the filter will help reduce subject contrast by filtering out the softer radiation photons. The amount of hardening depends on the type and thickness of the filter material. This is used to reduce excessive contrast when examining objects of which the thickness varies greatly to provide a more uniform density. When a filter is placed between the object and the film it provides extra help in further reducing scatter radiation. A metal layer between the object and the film filters the soft scatter radiation that occurs in the object thereby increasing the contrast of the image. The filter method can be applied when using cobalt 60 in combination with exposure times reducing intensifying screens which are sensitive to scattered radiation. This technique is also applied when the object is away from the film. For example, when magnification technique is employed. Here it can be seen that scatter radiation occurring from the object itself or walls is being absorbed by the filter and not penetrating into the film. When examining a steel component using a copper filter, the maximum thickness of the filter shall be 20% of the material thickness. When examining a steel component using a lead filter, the maximum thickness of the filter shall be 3% of the specimen thickness. Diaphragms. Diaphragms are typically pieces of lead placed near the tube to provide a narrower cone of radiation directed to the object. The diaphragm will create a narrower beam by using lead at either side below the window as shown in the image or pieces of lead that is cut into the shape of the piece under examination. As a result the diaphragm will reduce the beam size. Reducing the size of the beam with the placement of the diaphragm at the tube head will reduce the amount of scatter off of walls and other objects that are within the vicinity of the object. Radiation energy level Radiation energy level can also impact on the amount of scatter. As radiation energy level increases, the probability of scatter increases with it. The choice of what technique to use can depend on a variety of factors and in many cases, multiple techniques can be performed simultaneously, which will greatly reduce the amount of scatter and improve radiographic quality of the image by providing improved definition with desirable contrast. Well folks, that wraps up another video for this week. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. 
Until next time, work safe and expand your knowledge for an increased reliability of inspection.